Steve, yeah. what impression do you have of Japanese monyo patterns? Well, I get the impression that the Japanese are traditionally fond of using stylized images from nature, such as flowers, birds, insects, etc. Yes, mm. and the flowers and trees in particular are popular for kimono designs. Uh -huh. My favorite patterns are simple but chic ones, such as uh, kasuri mm. and shibori designs. Mm. Well, do you have any favorites? I particularly like the popular dragonfly motifs. But in the case of some monyo, I can't recognize what the motif is. Ah, yes. Perhaps you mean designs of clouds and pine trees. That's right, that's right. They're, they're very abstract. If you look closely at a kimono or a zabaton cushion, you will notice a series of interesting shapes, lines or motifs. These are classic Japanese patterns. This is a wave design called Seigaiha. It makes clever use of simple curves to express many waves bursting on top of each other. This is an arabesque pattern inspired by vines, which are vigorous plants. To the Japanese, it represents a wish for longevity and prosperity. These simple lines represent deer. The constant repetition of the same motif creates a dramatic effect. Geometric shapes can also be used as design elements. This is a checkered pattern made up of alternating squares of two different colors. Patterns like these became part of everyday life during the Edo period. Techniques of dyeing with paper stencils were improved and people began to compete with each other to create the most attractive designs. Now, this kimono may look plain, but actually, it isn't. If you look closer, you'll notice a lattice pattern with a tiny chrysanthemum motif inside each square. Intricate and detailed patterns like this are called komon. Considered very stylish, they became popular during the Edo period. Let's see how a piece of fabric bearing a komong design is dyed. First, all the little images are printed on the fabric using a paper stencil. Extra attention must be paid to the places where one set of motifs ends and another begins to ensure that they're seamlessly connected. In this pattern, each cherry blossom motif is only four millimeters across. They have been printed with such precision that you cannot see the joints. The next step is to dye the whole fabric in one swift motion. Finally, the fabric is steamed to help the dye set. Cherry blossoms in full bloom. The pattern came out perfectly. Japanese patterns are made up of design elements which are very simple on their own. But when these elements are repeatedly arranged in a meticulous manner, they look highly sophisticated and gain a whole new dimension. Stuart, yes. any comments on the video? Well, I really like that wave pattern. Very simple, but also very dynamic. Ah, yes. The Seigai Ha. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of various things. Um, Hokusai's dynamic wave prints, the long blue sheets with wave patterns used to represent the sea in Kabuki and so on. Yes, Japanese motifs spread throughout the arts. Mm. And in fact, we are surrounded by the sea in this studio. Oh yes, we are. But at least I hope we are not all at sea. Right. Stuart, yeah. talking about repetitive floral designs mm. reminds me of the famous English designer William Morris. Ah. Could you tell me something about him? Well, he was a multi-talented designer, craftsman and writer and a leading figure of the so-called arts and crafts movement in the mid-19th century. Uh -huh. He established an association of craftsmen 
basically to provide home furnishings. Uh -huh. As you say, Morris is best known today for his bold floral designs, but of course they were designed for use as um, wallpaper and uh, book designs, etc. Mm, that difference is interesting. In the case of Japanese patents, uh, besides being for fashion and decorative purposes, they are often still aimed at bringing good fortune or warding off evil. Mm. So uh, various personal items bear them. Mm -hmm. They also commonly reflect the seasons. So they are not used as uh, wallpaper designs, which can't be changed every season. I see. Um, uh, by the way, the um, Ichimatsu Moyo is interesting. Um, so simple and not particularly Japanese in concept, but long popular here, right? Yes. Mm. Well, uh, it started when the young Ikemen Kabuki actor, mm. uh, Sanogawa Ichimatsu, appeared on stage wearing a hakama pleated trousers with that design ah. in 1741. Um, he was only 19 at the time. Mm. Um, although uh, similar designs had been in use before his time, he was the one who turned it into a perennial fashion design mm. uh, for clothing. Mm. Simple but chic. We call that a checkered pattern, which comes from the ancient games found in almost all cultures of moving pieces on a checkered board, such as uh, chess and uh, drafts. But, Hiro, my question is, did Ichimatsu know about chess? Oh, that seems highly unlikely. Mm. Because chess